What is up, people? Gajmada Malay campaign number two, Unconditional Loyalty. There is an achievement, and it's time-based. You have to rescue the king in under ten minutes. Good Orn Lu actually double-checked before we started the video. So we're going to go ahead and try and do that. But let's jump in. I long-standing fear that quarrels within the court would threaten its collapse has come to pass. Treacherous warriors draw their Could separatists, separatists rise up against the Galactic Senate? A nobleman called Rakrian Kuti has betrayed the king and now lays siege to the royal palace. Fortunately, his treachery has not spread throughout the empire. The prime minister, Ayatada, remains loyal, and we have joined our forces to free the king and crush the rebellion. Let us hope that there is still enough time to save our king. Okay. King Jai Jayanagara must survive. You're limited to a population of 150, but can now advance to Imp. Losing Gajamada will not make you lose the scenario. There's still a lot of support for the Majapahit King in the region, so it's a good idea to explore the area and search for these loyalists. Yes! King Jayanagara does not have much time, so you must hurry to his rescue before the rebels can kill him. Uh, if memory serves, you have like 20 minutes or so. Uh, each of the three different gates... Wait. These... There are three different gates close by that you can use to get into the city. Each of them can lead to a different path to reach the king. Some are easier than others. Aryatada will help you breach the gates. Direct him by using taunts chat 105 to tell him to attack the westernmost gate, 106 to attack the middle gate, and 107 to attack the easternmost gate. That's definitely new. Uh, Gajamada has arrived to the northeast of the city. He has few assets initially, but can rely on the support of the loyalists near the capital. Directly to the north is Aryatada, who has all arrived to help save the king. Uh, the Majapahit king, Jayanagara, is trapped within the city and is surrounded by hostile rebel forces, so we gotta, you know, bust him out. Uh, Trolan has been occupied by the rebels. The rebels have assigned their strongest men to hold the walls. Um, essentially, Trolan is a dummy AI and has a bunch of post-imp units lying around, but they won't attack you or uh, replenish their forces. Uh, Rakhtarian Kuti controls the, the military buildings in the city and has infinite resources. And uh, the rebels are to the west and south of the city. And they play like a normal player. So they have villagers and build army and they're your main opponent. Yeah, go, go, go! The king is trapped at his palace in the city! Save him, Gaja! I am here to save my king. I'm glad to see you here to aid me in this difficult task, Gajamada. Yes, we are. We gotta go, 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 because we got ten minutes. The rebels have a strong grip on this city, but we can still count on the support of the people. If we go to them, they will give us what we need. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, because we are trying to act quickly, Sorry, I actually need to focus to try and uh, make sure that we're being at least relatively efficient. Anyway, getting all of these extra resources and troops is very beneficial. I don't think we get the extra resources back in HD. Now I actually have a good amount of resources. The, the big one, by far, is over here. We have heard of the presence yeah. of Lysi, and are here to fight for our king. Yeah. You get, like, eight ballista elephants and three battle elephants. Yeah, that makes your army a little bit better. Just a little bit. Not too much better. That, that is sarcasm, by the way. It makes your army a lot better. Anyway, the rebels will start in feudal age, but they will advance all the way up to imperial age, just like you. Yeah. 
Anyway, here's uh, Gajamata. Kind of a weak hero, to be honest, just because he has zero pierce armor, and he's really slow. But, you know, he's not terrible. Anyway, obviously we're going to need rams to help bust out the king. I'm just going to focus on getting our eco up and running. Uh, behind a degree of uh, units. Just enough to bust out the king, who is right here, by the way. And once we get close, um, we'll get control of all of these units as well. But the king's in the castle, obviously. That is uh, them attacking a house. I don't really care. You can see they're already in castle age. And in Oitwa, we have a few different rams. And then um, the big problem is going to be some onagers that are behind here. We're going to have to figure out a way to take those out um, before they can destroy all of our rams. And I believe we just have to reach him before the 10 minute mark. I don't think you have to, you know, get him back to your camp or anything like that. Yeah, these onagers are the ones. If I can distract the onager by attacking, having them attack the ballista elephants, that'd be great. Who knows, maybe the ballista elephant can even kill the onager. I know they can only deal one frickin' damage. No! Don't. Oh, well. I think it was good enough. Okay. I'll just run in. Well, just run. Move! Why does the Malay king look like the Persian Shah? Just, you know, question. Ooh. Anyway, we pretty easily got the achievement. Yeah, they definitely will attack with some pretty heavy resistance. And the king's not safe yet. Oh no. Oh yeah, Aryatara also stops helping you out once the king is rescued. I don't think he's going to make any more troops, which is somewhat uh, very annoying. Just as long as they don't attack the king. I don't even care that Gajamata died. See, you don't even get a text uh, notification that he died. That's how little it matters. Anyway, king safe. That's the most important thing. Anyway, the primary goal of this scenario is to bring the king down over here. Yeah, lost everything. Swasti. 
Uh, still, though, we should be getting a castle relatively soon. That should help defend us. And we are on the three town centers. But yeah, definitely making good use of those elephants that you can get really quickly is very important. Oh crap, I forgot to turn the game volume down. Oh well. You don't really want to listen to me anyway, so that should be fine. I have a blacksmith. Also, where am I under attack? Oh, just right there. That's far away. Fortunate that I do have to buy some stone, but such is life. Also, we are going to wall this. And hopefully can wall this. Nope. Whatever. So yeah, just make sure you keep the king somewhere safe, like a town center. The town center is not even the safest place ever, because, uh, you know, you garrison your villagers, and then you ungarrison them, and then the king's there, and then he runs off and dies. Oh boy, I really hope this castle can come up. Anyway, we have a bit more population with which to work. Does it mean we're still going to go for elephants? Probably. Maybe you try and go for some arbs as well. Just keep making villagers. I mean, I guess I could make some uh, military. That would probably be the more efficient thing to do. Why can't I build a freaking university? There we are. I've actually cl still climbed by around 10 villagers since the, uh, since the attack began. <laughs> Well, obviously all the idle time is not especially great. Um, Castle, you want to attack? Those are re why is the castle not auto attacking? This also gets some karambits just for anti ram purposes. Go for the rams! Uh, 
Ah, my phone! <laughs> well, this is rather annoying. Still climbing in villager count, though, and that's the most important thing. Getting housed is not ideal. Right there was a situation where I was about to ungarrison my town center, but then I remembered that the king was inside of it. Okay, uh, stone. There's a little more over here. Anyway, it looks like we're more or less fine. I mean, we're honestly way overboomed, but we're going to be losing plenty more villagers, and I feel. <laughs> Maybe go for some halves as well. Oh yeah, there's some more gold over here. I I R C. I can't believe we weathered that entire attack. Yes, by having a lot of idle time, but still coming out like ten villagers ahead. <laughs> And then with Malay, we'll be getting up to Imperial Age very quickly. Yeah, even though Ardiatada doesn't really help you anymore, uh, this market can be quite helpful. I could have sworn there was some gold over here. Where are the rest of my archers? Is this it? Ah, I guess it is. I wonder what happened to all of them. I had a bunch just like a second ago. I guess they just... Oh, the rebels are in Imperial Age. That explains a lot. Well, we're about to be there. Remember when I said that we were going to lose plenty of villagers? Ah, yes, here we are. Once we get enough stone for another castle, remember we can use some uh, trash two-handed swordsmen. Ah, yes, this doesn't have a gate in it. Probably explains why I probably lost a bunch of villagers along the way somehow. Those are trebuchets. 
Freaking chasing useless units. Okay, we're out of stone. But we can rebuild this castle. And with that, we can get stuff like conscription. And trebuchets and those sorts of important things. And we can always trade if we need gold. Okay, so what I'd also like are some more Swork shops. Malay unfortunately do not get Siege Ram, but they do get Bombard Cannon and Siege Engineer, so it's not completely terrible. You still have at least a lot of potential gold income, so that's why I'm not switching over into trade just yet. Because I don't really want to spend the upfront uh, gold cost. Hey, we'll just go pure trash for the time being, because it's really all we have the gold income for. Plus whatever siege weapons we can muster. Trash two-handed swordsmen will be nice as well, once we can get to them. But those still require several upgrades. Let's mix in some marble us though, because it will It'll be a really nice core, especially when it comes to sniping these random men-at-arms and elephants. Oh. Anyway, let's start breaking our way into the city. At this point, it's just a really slow, annoying grind. Oh, uh, Krambits probably won't be worth it. Just because they're not all that efficient against the sorts of things our opponents are making. They're good against, like, a lot of arbalests or trash units. Let's just get Forced Levy as a contingency. Oh, I never got chemistry. Or Siege Engineers. I still have 10 arbs, and they'll be a really nice sort of uh, backbone of our army. I guess I could switch into elephants. But I'm not really sure how good the elephants are going to be, to be honest. Um, let's at least back up with the arbs. 
angkat sanjata maju aku mar angkat sanjata maju ya baginda tapi aku marwan maju aku pengganti ya baginda oh god aku marwan angkat sanjata tapi ya satu baginda apa syasanya baginda ya satu baginda apa syasanya baginda Okay, let's at least start with some markets. And grab caravan. For multiplayer, I usually put my markets on nine. Uh, hotkey, in case that wasn't clear. Now, if this were like a multiplayer game and like everyone was running low on gold at this point, I think we were, we were in a, an amazing position, but it's not, and they have infinite resources. So it's going to be really hard. <laughs> and they can just keep on making gold units forever. I've talked about it a little bit in other campaigns, but to me there is a distinction between trading at allied markets versus trading at defeated enemies markets. Because, like, the game, you know, the, the creators of the, the scenario put the this market here for a very specific reason, so you can trade with it. Whereas, like, enemy markets are contingent on you just not accidentally destroying them or whatever. So it feels kind of cheap to me. Not that there's, like, a right or wrong way to play the, you know, a single-player game, but that's at least my philosophy. Now we're just going to go full multiplayer style, late game 1v1. Trash units and siege. At least until we get trade going. Then we can play late game team game. <laughs> but late game is what I enjoy the best. It's just, you know, without them having, uh, you know, trade to raid or even just gold mines to raid, it just, it, it feels pretty bleh. Okay. Let's keep on clearing out uh, Rakhrian Kutri's uh, production buildings, because he doesn't have villagers and can't remake them. Yeah, like, it's not even that, all that worth it to make uh, two-handed swordsmen, because they're mostly making gold units. Hell, I say that, and then some two handed swordsmen come in. Take down that bombard tower. Here. This is, we're going full Brazil on this rainforest. Thankfully, in Age of Empires, you don't have to worry about the ecological ramifications of what we do. Whoa! Do they make halves? I wasn't paying attention. Because if they don't make halves, that makes 
Switching into elephants, uh, way more appealing. Because we still lack any amount of uh, population efficiency. If you couldn't tell. Oh crap, I never got this guy. Hey, heater. See if we can maybe integrate a few more arbalests into our army, now that we do have trade up and running. Yeah, that trip's pretty dead. But if we can get to, like, Elephant Arb, that would be super sick, with, like, some random halves mixed in and Siege. Oh yeah, Siege. And we're pop-capped. Oh, let's go this way. And the best part is, look how little progress we've made. And there's still a bunch of bombard towers and infinite unit spam buildings and stuff like that in between us and there. Some more closer archery ranges. The king is still chilling in our town center, which is, you know, pretty safe for the time being. Don't need quite this many farmers. Wood's actually running a little low. Ugh. Almost have enough for Elite Battle Elephant. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Hmm, it's not super clear what the best way to push would be. I guess we can try just going right through the middle. Just take out those uh, Trollon units. Orange. Getting all my hotkeys mixed up. Whoa, buggy. Some more gold over here. Oh, did all these villagers die? Alas. Ignore the trebuchet. I mean, nominally we have a pretty big army, but it doesn't feel like it. Crap. That was kind of wasteful of me. Yeah. 
Okay, now we can really start to leverage our trade. Don't have to focus on any trash ins other than halbs. Okay, should be some more buildings over here we can snipe. We can even take high ground, like smart people. Whoa! That's a... well, I guess they're mostly Karambits, but still. It's a rather large army. Just don't mind the villagers, man. I mean, I guess I could delete more villagers, but it's not like we're taking the greatest trades in the world. Like, we're still having to replenish our units pretty damn often, as in literally constantly. I guess we are making slow but steady progress. Destroying uh, Rakrian Kutri's production is definitely a help. Oof. You can send a few more of these farmers over. Keep on pushing. Hopefully these battle elephants can take down all these karambits. I believe in you elephant splash damage. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Where's the king? I undergarrisoned the king. Oh my god, where is he? Oh god. He's gonna die somewhere unless I find him. Oh wait, no! Oh, oh my god, giving myself a heart attack. I guess a safer place would be the castle. Maybe I can make some infantry and clean up these production buildings as well. Damn, looks like most of these guys are dead. There's probably another production building or so over here, but not that many. We're already an hour into this scenario, and we've made it, like, at most halfway. Yeah, Malay are not very good at being population efficient. Oh my god, how many villagers are left? Seriously? They were sniping my villagers? Okay, 
Need more siege. Man, I forgot how annoying this scenario was. Okay, again, the elephant should do well versus the Karambits. There's something over here to the east I need to clean up. Oh, I forgot about these guys. I mean, we're fine on resources. Oh, trebuchets. Duh. Whoa, where'd you guys come from? I'll take them. Like, see, our food count is slowly dwindling over time, because we're not actually being all that efficient. So it's like, it's, I, I could try and go for like 150, you know, population army or something silly like that, but it seems way too risky. But hey, we're top score! Yay! But yeah, this is a lot of cap rams we have. Okay, here we go. Making progress. And those guys are stuck. Typical. Really? There's another layer of gate? What I am going to do is once I... So there's going to be like a clearing over here. And we're going to use our forward villagers over here to build a castle. And then we'll transport the king to the castle and then focus on the, the last little stretch right here. Because you can see that the uh, the coast is anything but clear. But our army here is pretty pretty damn good. Let's go kill some more buildings. <gasps> I don't remember. I didn't remember about the onagers. Why are you guys standing around? Oh god, there are Trev's here too. And I thought things were going well for once. Wait, why are you stopping elephants? <laughs> well, at least a couple Vils made it. Oh yeah. Castle. Need to buy it. Oh my god. Don't don't kill my bills, man. That's just a dick move. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about the Siege Workshop too. And a stable. We'll certainly put them to good use. Anyway, put a castle over here on this hill. Then we can think about transporting the king over. Oh, damn, we are actually kind of losing control over here. But we are going to need a bunch of units over here anyway, so we can go grab the king. Do they seriously snipe that bombard cannon? Ugh. Screw it. Everyone's coming on over here. Okay, once we get a bit of a better foothold over here, then we can... And the castle is completed. Then we can send everyone over. Okay. We're gonna do it. Here is the king's royal escort. Okay, we're gonna hotkey him. I've said it before, but Malay just seems like a very inefficient language. Like, that's a lot of words. <gasps> Just walk on. Oh, took a javelin. I'm sure Rakrian Kutri has some, or Kuti just has some more stuff. Okay. Perfect. Just go garrison you. And get back to this. I don't know, go go lumberjack or something. King is safe. No, at forward, please. I guess now I could go for some cramps just to have a unit. Man, we were making... What? We've made every single Malay land unit except Petards, Onager Scorpions, Cav Archers, and the Night Line. So we've used a good, like, two-thirds to 75% of all Malay units in this scenario. This is truly a tour de force of what Malay can have to offer on land. And anyway, once those bombard towers are dead, we'll run the king in. And there they go. And we'll finally win. Definitely one of the longer campaigns. Again, he looks like a Shah, not not like that. Anyway, here's the map. 
Trollon obviously dominating the center of it. They don't have any more. Oh, I guess I had a couple stables over here. Ariatada was in the north. He was eh, sort of helpful when it came to initially taking down the, uh, or rescuing the king, but not doing anything after that except providing a market. Here are the rebels. They obviously were our main opponent. And we uh, finally got our way down over here. We crushed the rebellion and executed the leaders. To celebrate our victory, the king threw a great festival, and the poet sang of his courage and ferocity in the face of danger. I dig that. Nevertheless, I am beginning to doubt my king. He believes that he is untouchable and acts immorally, desiring the wives and daughters of his subordinates. Even his most loyal supporters have begun to hate him. He Trin saved you Wana, for what? The king's stepsister has even told me that the king now shows a dubious interest in her. With such oh God. Belief, it is only a matter of time before something bad will happen. To my king. Which may or may not involve assassinating him. KD still broken, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't great, though. Anyway, that is just number two. It's just unconditional loyalty. Next is going to be number three. The Oath to uh, Unify Nusantara. Uh, see you guys then!